Maurice Young is a, he's a highly educated man. Uh, he could choose, I can't even imagine how many different roads he could choose to take in his life. And he's chosen to be an advocate for those without homes. No one that I know of is willing to give up their posh job downtown and their nice you know, home with their nice car to go down there and experience what the homeless people are experiencing. If you didn't know Marty and you looked at him walking down the street and you see his beard and you see his dreads and you see what he have on, you're like, oh, what's up with that dude? When we were in high school, we had a group, a dance group called EGD, Every Girl Stream, that we would win all the time. I mean, we were just that good. He was always a pretty boy. He had to get his hair just right. He had to have the right cologne on. Everything had to match. People would flock to him, but the people that he let stay around him were the weaker kids that got picked on. But my brother has two degrees. He was the president valedictorian of his class when he graduated. He decided to, to take himself down to the lowest level because he didn't trust himself not to get back into that old Maurice. What does that look like uh, to love thy neighbor as you would love thyself? Self. Didn't know what that looked like. I felt like when I had what I had, it was hindering me from giving 100%. But if I have nothing to give, ironically, I have everything to give. Irish Hill was clearly uh, the largest community of homeless people in Indianapolis. My home is where your heart is at. My heart was in my tent, in my, in my camp community. It was a place you could come, find refuge, safety and peace, until you could start making better choices, if that was what your goal was. The police officers that came through that beat noticed a, a marked difference between the number of calls that they received when he wasn't there to the number of calls you've received, they almost went to zero. And he said, well, I have an intake process. Um, I've got a bed that's right next to my tent, and I take the people in and I just monitor them. I see what their needs are. There's usually a reason why they're here. The camp really helped meet the needs of the homeless within our community. The basic needs, the water, the safety, the security, and the relationship. And then at that point, people were then ready to make different choices and transition themselves out of homelessness. Various service providers felt it was so cool to find their clients in one location. And we had transitioned out about 61 people since June of last year because of the way that the camp was structured and organized. There is a peace over him that I hadn't seen in a long time. He's doing what he's supposed to do. He's not down there struggling. He's actually down there making people better and making it better for people. They have a block party for all the rest of the uh, folks who are homeless that live around the city. What well, homeless group has block parties every Sunday? They were certainly grateful to be part of a group. It's very vulnerable being out on your own. It's a mini city of sorts, a homeless camp that sits under a CSX viaduct on Davidson Avenue, southeast of downtown. And if this is a community, Maurice is its mayor. He's been living in his tent here for two years. But the city has told Maurice and the 66 others they have to leave by Monday. Signs posted say it's for construction and bridge cleaning. Maurice believes the land across from the tent city has been sold for development. This probably doesn't help uh, land values too much here. It's basically what it boiled down to. So they had to come up with a reason to move them. But it took them two years to come up with a reason. I think, again, it's an attempt to move the homeless out of downtown. And I told them we are peacefully protesting 
the seizure and the destruction of our personal property without our due process rights. This turned out to be a pretty peaceful eviction. Yeah, Lauren, it really did. It was pretty peaceful, but it was also a little heartbreaking. Now, 67 people actually called this area home not too long ago. They were given an eviction notice one week ago, and today was that deadline that they had to get out. The man who other homeless people here at the camp referred to as their leader, Maurice Young, was arrested after refusing to leave. He and four other people who were not homeless but said they were here to support him were arrested for obstructing traffic, a Class B misdemeanor. He stood in grace. He was loving, peaceful, calm, accepting. He was like, if I don't get locked up, nobody will ever hear my story. But if I do get locked up, everybody will want to hear my story. I felt like the only way we could make a stand was to get this thing into a courtroom. Unlike in the past, the city has done these type of uh, evictions and it went under the cover of darkness, but not this one. So I was really excited about that because the homeless people have rights and they know that we have rights and the things that they were doing were illegal. We want to put a proposal settlement together and present it to the city, to the mayor himself, requesting a day shelter for homeless for the wintertime, a safe place for people to sleep during the nighttime, and uh, the Homeless Bill of Rights. It gives homeless people leverage to sue people who discriminate against them. But as long as the end result is a better environment for the homeless in the city of Indianapolis, I think we'll be happy. I don't know how you can become a, a non-homeless friendly city, but um, this whole war, it's like they've declared war on the homeless. Indianapolis prefers things spread out because if everything is spread out, if you have three or four here, two or three there, a few over there, that doesn't seem to be a problem. But if we all come together, then unfortunately you see that there is a problem which becomes a problem. But all that we seek is a place for the homeless to be. So let's address it and make it a win-win for everybody. But who wants to talk about a problem that they don't think they have? So I get it. During our process, we have had a lot of people come down to offer us assistance. But when the pastor and them came down, and offered a building, I was deeply moved by that because if I understood correctly, the building was going to be a school that they were going to use to support them in their ministry. Estando en aquel lugar en Michigan, miramos las noticias que allí estaba arrestando a Maurice y a todas las personas del mismo lugar. Y entonces yo en mi corazón y con mi esposa dije, andamos buscando ropa para ellos y los están sacando. Nosotros venimos inmediatamente para acá, Indianapolis, Empezamos a buscarlo en las, todas las los cárceles, buscarlo por las calles y muchos lugares más, y no lo encontrábamos. And after they had heard what had happened, they were willing to forego their needs and then give the building to us. Estas aulas las quería para clases, pero cuando Dios te cambia tu corazón, no puedes hacer las cosas que tú quieres, sino las que Dios quiere. A lot of people are living paycheck to paycheck. Um, and so what happens when that paycheck goes away? I don't think we're that far away from being homeless ourselves. These are human beings. These are individuals who have individual challenges. Other people, they're just, they're the same as us, but they, they don't have the things we have. It's as if they have no name no face, it's as if they're being, they're, they're invisible. He really, truly cares about those people there. Then I'm like, well, should Maurice be working for a living because he's more than capable? Should he be living off of the systems that I pay taxes into? I don't know, and, and where do these people go? They, I believe that they should be cared for, but how? But those people have a story, and most of us don't have the time to go down and spend time with people who are troubled. 
But Maurice is that guy. He's the one down there building relationships and helping these guys. He connects with them heart to heart. Maurice lives with his heart wide open. Maurice has a heart of gold. He's hit a whole bunch of homeless people, and I'm one of those. Of all the causes, I think that this particular group of folks, the homeless people, they have the least amount of advocates, and they, have, they don't have very many effective advocates either, so this was it for me. Yo pienso que él es un hombre especial para Dios. Nadie va a ir a poner la cara por otro y a que lo arresten y todo. Pienso que es un hombre que Dios lo necesita a él para hacer cosas grandes que nadie las quiere hacer. I think the truth found me and drew me to it. And I, I followed it. And that path led me where I am today. Because the garden has to have a gardener. <laughs> As long as there are people that need help and he's in a position to help them, um, he's going to do this. Maurice has chosen to be their friend, their voice, their advocate, and he does that living side by side with them.